Okay, general relativity, step by step. I'm going to start out with a function f equals a function of x and y, which are going to be my Cartesian coordinates. So I'll write down f equals f of x comma y. And even here, we've got a little bit of a notational confusion because the letter f, uh, sometimes I'll have an explicit explicit uh, statement of the um, dependencies of f, and sometimes I won't. Sometimes I'll just write f and understand that it equals f of x comma y. Um, so I'm going to draw some contours of f. There's x, there's y, nice Cartesian, very simple Cartesian coordinates. And here's some contours of f. There's a little mountain here, and there might be some other contours, um, local maxima, and all sorts of things going on. Now, I think of f um, as a temperature. f equals the temperature at point x, comma y. But it could equal the altitude, altitude, and those would be real contour lines then, I guess. Or it could be gravitational potential, it could be any, any scalar function. Um, and I'm interested in what happens when I move from point x, comma, y to x plus delta x, comma, y plus delta y. So uh, we've got, and I'm interested in delta f, which equals f of x plus delta x comma y plus delta y minus f of x comma y. Uh, so how do we figure that out? Well, we've got to go from this point. We can do it two ways. We can either go up here and along there, or along there and up there. But to first order, we look at this. This is, of course, f of x plus delta x comma y. And so the first addition that we've got is f goes to... Uh, f of x plus delta x comma y, which equals f of x comma y plus curly di f di x delta x to first order. And then uh, the next step will be going to f of x plus delta x comma f oops, y plus delta y. And that's going to be equal to f of x comma y plus di f di x delta x. That is where we were here. Plus, so we've gone along there, and now we've got to go up here, di f di y delta y. So we're left with quite the nice, quite oops, quite a nice little, uh, quite a nice little result. But delta f equals di f di x delta x plus di f, di y, delta y. And I'll, I'll come back again and again and again to this, because it's quite a nice little way of thinking. Delta f equals di f, di x, delta x, plus di f, del y, delta y. We've kind of unpacked the dependencies of f. Of f. See, sometimes I'm writing the letter f, and sometimes I'll write down uh, x and y explicitly. We can pack F here. Um, of course, if F was equal to F of X, comma, Y, comma, Z, if we had three uh, three arguments here, then I would write that delta, this is all to first order. Obviously, if you've got second derivatives in there, or if you're interested in, in the second derivatives, or you've got second order terms, then it's going to be, there's going to be more stuff in there. But, Delta f equals, if it's a function of three arguments, di f, di x, delta x, plus di f, di y, delta y, plus di f, di z, delta z. Great stuff. Um, and of course, I can generalize it to its absolute f of x1, x2, x3, all the way up to xn. You see here, this is like a 3D space. So I think of f of x comma y comma z, which you do quite often in uh, undergraduate calculus. I quite often think of um, functions of three uh, variables as 
temperature in a room, and so you can move around in the x and the y and the z direction, and the temperature changes. You can have other functions as well, but that's how I think of it. So the function, so delta f is the change in temperature, I guess, and there's three components because you move in the x, the y, and the z direction, and the partial differentials say how quickly the temperature is changing in all of those directions. Here we've got f equals f of x1, x2, x3, up to xn, so it's an arbitrary kind of thing. Uh, and so delta f equals, again to first order, di f, di x1, delta x1, plus dot dot dot, plus di f, di xn, delta xn. I'm not writing that very neatly, I'll just write that out again, xn. Equals sigma, and we'll come back to this, i equals 1 to n, of di f, di xi, delta x i again to first order delta f equals that so it's a beautiful uh, a beautiful little result um, and again we come back to it again and again and again what we what we're find, what we've got is that the function f has got multiple dependencies we need to unpack all those to work out what happens to f the delta f we need to differentiate or partially differentiate f with respect to all of its uh, arguments and then multiply each partial derivative by how far you've gone in each direction. There's a very nice Wikipedia page, uh, which is here. Uh, Wikipedia page is quite nice. Uh, it, it's, it, it talks about a total total derivative here. So there's di f, di t, uh, where, where uh, x and y are themselves functions of time. So you, it's the same thing, but there's, 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 a, there's this extra, uh, extra, extra aspect to it, which I'm not covering. Okay, I'm going to stop there. So there's our first, our first little rule, which I'm going to use over and over and over and over and over again. Stop there.